Hey YouTube, Chance Paladin here. Um, doing another uh, songs you didn't know were about auditing. I uh, finally got some feedback on my last one. The feedback was positive. It's time to do another one. This is a song from one of my all-time favorite bands, Five Finger Death Punch. And this is a song called Walk Away. This song came to me, uh, no joke, in the middle of an audit. And this is this is as legit as it gets. So um this is this is the real deal. So uh getting to character here. So I'm talking to a guy. I of course have my have my my witness with me, my subject matter expert. Uh, in the department and uh, we uh, were, were I'm, I'm auditing this guy and he uh, his manager points points him out as the as the expert in his area as as he is the one who has been controlling all the project documentation for three extremely expensive projects <laughs> we're talking multiple multiple 10 million dollar projects and uh i'm i'm just doing audit making sure making sure everything's on the up and up nobody's in trouble nobody's done anything wrong uh, these are just internal this is just to help them out honestly to keep them busted or keep them actually from getting from getting busted by everybody else uh the multitude of other auditing departments there's so many that they're uncountable i there's so many i don't even know them all and no nobody knows them all i tried i tried to keep track and it was impossible they just show up you verify they exist, it turns out they do. And there's nothing you can do about it. Like the frickin' Spanish Inquisition. So, I'm there to try to get ahead of the, try to get ahead of the ball. So I'm sitting there with this guy. And... It's apparent that he has no idea where his own project documentation is. This is the worst case scenario. And just minutes before he had said that he did. This is this is the guy's only job. Okay. Small problem. Now this is not the first time this has happened. So as soon as I identify this and my my witness tried tried to help him kind of coach him along which I which I let her do and it's no big deal it's why she's there not there to get people in trouble he started showing signs of of nervousness and things can only go one way from there so we had to do our secret hand signals and get out so he could so he could chill and um he was very relieved, and everything was fine. We got him the help he needed. Everything ended up being okay. But this song pops in my head out of nowhere as we walked away from this guy. So, this voice says to me, I'm sorry for the demon, the, the demon that I've become. And it's okay. It's alright, I said. You you shouldn't be sorry for the demon you've become. What you really should be sorry for is the angel you are not. I'm sorry for the cruel things that I did. Meaning what that that I had to audit you. I'm sorry I'm sorry that I had to audit you because there's no way that I could have known 
that you had no idea where your project documentation was. There's no way I could have known that, which is why I had to audit you in the first place, right? That's that's the whole that's the whole point. So I apologize that I had to do that. I did it the nicest way, the most professional way. We did everything that we could have. But it ended up being cruel to him anyway. We watched carefully for every sign, gave him every opportunity. I was gentle as as a as a feather. We did everything we could. It ended up being cruel anyway. Just as as a matter of circumstance. And that's and that's what I didn't regret. Right? I didn't reg regret having to do the audit. But I am, but I am sorry that it, that that happened. And so, what he says back to me, is he says. He's basically thanking me. For walking away. He's, he's praising me. And and thanking me. For being able to understand and realize the signs so that he didn't have to break down and lose his dignity so he's saying thank you for walking away and making it easy on me because because it made it easy on me because I didn't have to be I didn't have to be any more cruel I, I don't I don't have to to apologize and put myself in a worse position and I can still maintain the moral high ground so I can go back to my desk knowing that I did exactly what I was supposed to do and still have the moral and ethical high ground and that I didn't send somebody off the edge that day because as an auditor unfortunately if you're not careful that is a very real possibility so, he's saying, you know, just walk away and make it easy on yourself. Saying, allow yourself to, to maintain your moral high ground and, and st still have a nice day. You know, not, not be pissed at yourself the rest of the day for what could have happened if if a line had been crossed because you had missed some sign but also he's saying by walking away you are re releasing him from the hell that he is feeling inside and the hell that he's feeling inside is he has has been internalizing the fact that he hasn't been knowing what's been going on with his projects for a while he has he has been marginalized out of his projects for some time and i could tell by looking at the last dates of any of the projects that he had when I started to trace backwards, you could tell that maybe about three months prior, he was the project coordinator. They had just cut him out of all the projects for some reason. They can't, they can't do that. So something, something was going on. And his manager was throwing him under the bus. And he, and then they sent me to him. The manager sent me to him. So some that's not... And project managers do that sometimes. And I, I don't let that happen. So... He... He wanted me... To both release him from the hell from the project manager. But also... Obviously that he had to deal with... Sitting there for months with nobody to turn to. It's not like HR is going to understand that. And what do you do? Go to project management's management? I mean, they, they're dealing with, you know, multiple projects. There's 
there isn't really any structure in place to deal with things like that. That's that's why you have auditing groups. So anyway, and he's saying there's there's nothing left to feel. Meaning you've you've you know what you need to know. You have seen in my face, meaning the nonverbal communication. You've seen everything that you need to see. You now know you now know what you need to know. You can you can go take care of this. You know what to do. But then I say but then I say to myself It's like what do I do? Do I just walk away and pretend that none of this is real? Because how many times have I seen this? And it's like the same it is like the same thing over and over and over. How many battles exactly like this one have I fought? And how many of these people have I seen? And how many cries for help like I have seen in this guy's face? And these are adults. These are people older than me. And they are petrified by people <laughs> even older than me that are, as one of my friends used to put it, clearly over a foot taller than me. And since management is measured in height, um, and some of these people are well over, you know, 6'5", you know, 6'7", some of them. And I am, I'm by no means short. I'm, uh, you know, 5'10", uh, which is, uh, I think, I think what the average height is like 5'8", so 5'10's not bad. Um, me and them would get into it, and I would pull, even though I'm a contractor, they would try to pull rank on me like crazy. And they would try to do the height and the intimidation. And I would have to... I, I did not back down. Because I knew I had the support of the general manager. Which was way above them. But that didn't mean that they wouldn't try to intimidate the hell out of me. But still, every time you walk away and go... Am I going to lose my credibility? Is, is this going to be the one that destroys my credibility or am I going to go back to my desk and freaking get ready for war and kick somebody's ass for screwing with this guy so I go back to my desk and you know I think I think to myself All the all the people, all the people before me, and that I've helped, and some of the ones that I haven't been able to help, and you know, with my with my counterpart that witnessed the whole thing, you know, having the you should always have you know an after audit meeting, you know, because me and her were talking about this, and I was like, could you forgive me if I told you? that I cared because this is her team she she had to work with them all the time and even though in kind of the hierarchy she wasn't exactly level with them she's in sort of a different department and a different role but that's actually a good thing because there was no conflict of interest she still cared dearly about every single one of them and in a way, she relied on them just as much as I did, but for completely different things. And I asked her, could you forgive me if I told you that I cared? And would you be sorry if I swore that I'd be there? And she kind of looks at me like, 
Are you talking backwards again? Like, are you really tired? Do you need something to eat? And... I kind of... It's kind of like rhetorical. It's like saying... What if all along I didn't care? What if... What if this was all just my job? Like, would you think any less of me? We'd already been working together for so long. I mean, me and her had been to hell and back. Had... I mean, oh my goodness. And then we ended up forging a bond that was freaking unbreakable. Which is why we're able to share things like this. And we we're able to freaking do the impossible. And... In the end, being able to being able to laugh at somebody when they fall, being able to laugh at somebody when they make a mistake, or when they say something stupid, or when they start to share doubt, or when they start to take themselves too seriously. Or when all of a sudden they start to compromise their own beliefs. And she looks at me, and, and because we have this honesty and this trust, you know, and, and I say to her, what, what would happen after all this time if I never actually cared at all? And she said, she said, just walk away. Make it easy on yourself. Just walk away. Please release me from this hell. Just walk away. There's nothing left to feel. Just walk away. Pretend that none of this is real. Now, what she's saying right here is that a, a huge chunk of this she has only been doing it she has only had the strength because I have been there as an anchor nobody, nobody else has had the strength to do this and there's no way she'd be able to do it alone because she's stuck on the inside this is before they had their own department. This was before... <laughs> an immensely powerful person, way stronger than me, became a, a, a brand new department head and took over and took her under his wing, made a brand new department, and, and kicks all their asses now. This was before that. And so it was just me and her and against against everybody. And and what she's basically saying here is is you can walk away, but just keep in mind that the only reason that I'm here doing this is because you're here. And that is the same for a lot of people. A lot of people are here because they believe in you. So. And then. And then she says. That's why she says right here. She goes, so just walk away and make it easy on us both. And then just walk away. There was never any hope. So that's basically saying. It'll be as if you were never here in the first place. So just walk away. You already know the deal. Now, that's the important part. You already know the deal. And you know what the deal is? The deal is that I am a freaking contractor. And she is full-time. So, I'm going to be gone one way or the other. 
It's just a matter of when. So, sooner or later, I'm either going to have to walk away, or I'm going to be pushed out the door. It's just whether or not I get to choose. So, I either keep fighting to the end, or I choose to walk away. And if I walk away, I have to pretend like none of it was real. Because at some point, I decided not to fight. And if at any point I chose not to fight, just because, you know, it's not even because of credibility. It's just because I just wanted to walk away and stop caring. There was there was no credibility at stake. I I had I had a legitimate finding here clear as day. And if I walked away from this, I was losing credibility. Because I because I would have been in the wrong by walking away from this. So it would have been easy for me to walk away because it would have been less work whereas if this hadn't have been a finding and I was trying to just drum up garbage then obviously that would have been a different story it would have been more work to just drum up crap and then lose my credibility whereas at that point it would have been better to walk away and maintain my credibility, and then I could have got more work done. So she says, yeah, just, just go ahead and walk away. Pretend that none of this was real. Pretend that all of this work wasn't real. You know the deal. You're a freaking contractor. I've got to stay here. As soon as you leave, you'll release me, and I'll get to go back to my job. Everybody will get to go back to their job, just like the other guy said. Release me from this hell. He'll go back to his job. You know, dealing with his... Dealing with his idiots, however the hell he was coping before. So... What do you think I chose? I chose to stay and kick ass until the bitter freaking end. And... I won... I won this battle. And because of it... Not only did these people get a brand new, amazing, fully staffed department, which is awesome, but the project coordinator slash whatever you want to call them, project management department, got their very own, <laughs> uh, non-consensually, <laughs> got their own oversight and training department so everybody got trained and there was an oversight uh three people did what what me and this gal did uh, as auditors except they did it for every single project for every single person and made sure every single project had every single thing that it needed forever became standard process so we affected the lives and projects of everybody and every single project forever. And this was the song that popped into my head the day, the hour, and the minute that I knew I had to freaking do something. Because this guy was... He was just being ripped apart inside and I'd seen it before and I I never wanted to see it again because nobody should have to go through that nobody should nobody should and as an auditor you're gonna see this stuff and you need to know when it's your time to fight and when it's your time to walk 
And if it's easier to walk away, you need to think about why. And you need to think about what you're walking away from. And you need to think about, are you walking away from for the right reasons? And you, need, and you need to think about who you're leaving behind. And most importantly, you need to think about the deal. Okay? So, anyway. It's been Chance Paladin. It's another uh, song you didn't know is about auditing. Uh, like, subscribe, tell your friends, check out my Patreon. I'm trying to make it more professional looking. If, uh, if this helps you in any way, throw me a dollar or something. If you want some consulting or anything, go check it out. And um, check out my other training videos. And Thanks for everything, and talk to you guys later. Bye.